Unless you've been living under a rock this year, you know that the demand for gold in China has been nothing short of incredible. In March alone, China imported 223 tons through Hong Kong, about 8% of the world production in a single month. Here you are looking at a graph that shows that Chinese demand for physical delivery all by itself is nearly equal to total worldwide gold production. In June of this year, East China's Shandong province had a promotion on gold which drew more than 10,000 people as you can see in the following images. Now when I was in college I studied supply and demand in my economics courses and when the supply of a commodity was high the demand is usually low and commanded a lower price and when the, the supply was low the demand was, would be higher commanding a higher price but that's not what we're seeing in China and I have no other way of figuring this out but turning to the man who's in charge of quadrupling the monetary base in the US from 800 billion to 3.2 trillion over the past five years now since this particular man has created so much currency and I know that at the end of 2012 China held 3.3 trillion US dollars in foreign reserves I thought maybe we could get some answers and, and we could figure this all out the protection do you, th do you think gold is money no. It's not money. It's been in production money for 6,000 years. Somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same. Would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money well, either, why, but they're why, financial assets. Why do central banks hold it? Well, it's the reserves. So why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition. Long-term <laughs> tradition. You know, some people still think it's money. I yield back. My time is up. Thank you. Let me talk about one other topic because I don't have a lot of time. Uh, sorry to jump around so much, but uh, uh, gold prices. You know, we had gold prices almost $2,000 an ounce. Um, it's dropped about $600 an ounce uh, trading, I think, today around 1275 somewhere around there. Um, do you have any insight on why this volatil volatility, what quantitative easing would have, what long-term impact it will have um, as you ratchet back? The gold is, a, is an unusual asset. It, it's, it's an asset that people hold as sort of uh, disaster insurance. They want, you know, they, they feel if things go really badly wrong, at least they, you know, they'll have some gold in their portfolio. Um, is that an so, accurate? Sorry? Is that an accurate feeling? It's not all that accurate. I mean, uh, for example, uh, a lot of people hold gold as an inflation hedge, but the movements of gold prices don't predict inflation very well, actually. But anyway, the perception is that by holding gold, you're you're having you have a hard asset that you'll be protected it will protect you in case of some kind of major uh, problem. Um, and I suppose that one reason that gold prices are lower is that people are less concerned about extreme outcomes, uh, either you know uh, particularly negative outcomes, and therefore they feel less need for whatever protection gold affords. Do you believe it's an indication, of perhaps psychologically? The feel, uh, the direction of the economy for investors. Um, I, I think psychologically, it, you know, with price, gold price going down is not necessarily a, a bad thing from that perspective. It suggests people have some some more confidence and are less concerned about really bad outcomes. But let me just end by saying that nobody really understands gold prices, and I don't uh, pretend to really understand them either. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Warren. Well, since Uncle Ben just seemed to add to the confusion with gold in China and the situation at hand. Maybe one of the richest men in the world can help clear things up a bit. Or maybe not. But, you know, gold is a, a very tough one because it's so psychological. And if central banks or the IMF ever uh, decided to take advantage, and I think countries need liquidity, yeah. you know, hey, <laughs> there's an asset that's not doing anything for the citizens and then you you know because it's purely psychological it's not like people say oh when it gets to eight hundred dollars an ounce people will buy four times as much jewelry but there's no uh nothing that that steps in as a buyer at any price it's just purely oh other people think it's other people in the future will think it's worth more than it's worth today um which you know if you think the world is scary and people are going to panic 
I'm not saying that theory doesn't exist, but there is no floor if uh, ever people got a view. You do, we had a uh, invention.